Hi, second grade students. Today's story is from Knowledge 8, Lesson 7, called Armored Tanks of the Insect World. Before I begin our story, I'm going to go over our vocabulary words. Our first vocabulary word for today's story is the word adapt. Repeat after me. Adapt. Adapt means to change in order to survive in new conditions. Our next vocabulary word is the word armor. Say armor. Armor is a protective layer or shell. Our last vocabulary word is the word mimicry. Say mimicry. Mimicry means the close resemblance of a plant or an animal to another. My grasshopper friend tells me that he asked you to guess the largest group of insects on earth. Did anyone guess flies? Perhaps you guessed ants. Both ants and flies are good guesses. You may notice flies and ants more often than you do the enormous group of insects to which I belong. Do you remember seeing a picture of me in the first lesson about insects? Who remembers my name? Yes, I'm a ladybug. But did you know that ladybugs are beetles? Fireflies are beetles too. Beetles make up about two thirds of all insects on our planet. There are over 400,000 kinds of beetles. By the end of today, you will know a lot more about these amazingly diverse insects. They come in all shapes, sizes, and colors. Beetles include fireflies, weevils, whirligigs, and rhinoceros beetles. You already know what makes an insect an insect, so what makes a beetle a beetle? First of all, because beetles are insects, we share the same characteristics as all insects. We have a head, a thorax, and an abdomen. We have antennae, six legs, a hard exoskeleton, and wings. Most beetles undergo a complete metamorphosis. What else do all beetles have in common? Beetles stand out in the insect world because of our heavy armor or protective covering. In addition to our exoskeletons, our wings provide protection. Most beetles have two pairs of wings, but our front wings are not really wings at all. These thick, hard protective coverings are called elytra. When we're resting, we tuck our delicate back wings under our elytra, or front wings, so that you cannot see them at all. Then, when we are ready to fly, we unlock our elytra and unfold our long, thin back wings. Our elytra provide lift-like of the wings of an airplane, but they remain quite still as our back wings beat up and down in flight. Scientists believe one reason insects have survived or continued to live in such huge numbers on Earth is because many of us can fly. But beetles are not the fastest flyers in the insect world. In fact, some ground beetles do not fly at all. Surely one big reason for our survival is the hard outer wing cases that set us apart from other insects. Being tough, we're able to burrow down under stones and logs into very narrow places where we remain hidden, protected from predators. It's really hard to crush or bite or beetle. We clever beetles have many means of protection. For instance, look at the Bombardier beetle. This ground living beetle produces chemicals in its abdomen. When attacked by a predator, the chemicals combine to form a bad smelling boiling liquid. The Bombardier beetle makes a loud popping noise as it sprays its enemies with the chemicals, sometimes burning other insects or even people. Mimicry, or animal lookalikes, is another way beetles protect themselves. Look at this beetle. What does it look like? It is called a wasp beetle because its long yellow and black body mimics or copies that of a wasp. How do you think this keeps predators away from the wasp beetle? Of course, they're afraid of being stung. Another reason for large numbers of beetles is the fact that different species adapt or change over very long periods of time to suit their environments. Beetles live in some of the most difficult places to live on Earth, some surviving in the intense heat of the desert and others in underwater habitats where they have to develop ways of breathing underwater. Many desert beetles are wingless and live beneath the sand where it's cooler and less dry. Some, like these Namibian desert beetles, have stilt-like legs, allowing for them to rise above the hot sand. Still, others have developed arch elytra, creating tiny air pockets to help protect them from the heat. Because insects need air to live, water beetles must come to the surface to get the oxygen they need to breathe. Some water beetles, like this diving beetle, have developed a trick of carrying oxygen bubbles underwater, trapped just beneath their elytra. This whirligig beetle solves the oxygen problem by staying mostly on the surface of ponds and streams, using its paddle-shaped legs to spin and turn. 
Its eyes, divided into two parts, can see above and below the surface of the water at the same time. Beetles have adapted over the years to eating a variety of plant and animal foods. With their strong chewing mouth parts, nearly every possible food source is used by some kind of beetle. Weevils, like this bull weevil, are thought to be some of the peskiest of all beetles. Their long snouts enable them to bore down into seed pods of plants called bulls. Bull weevils have destroyed many fields of cotton, laying eggs in the holes that they make. When the eggs hatch, the larvae eat the plants from the inside out. Some beetles feed on grains and seeds. Others chomp on apples, cherries, and other fruits. Still, others live on wood and decaying plant life. Carrion beetles and their larvae feed on dead animals. Dung beetles are named for the food that they eat. Dung is manure, the solid waste of animals. Dung is very rich in nutrients and an ideal food for young dung beetles. Adult dung beetles compete to get some of the dung. They roll it into balls and push them away from the other beetles. They bury the balls in the ground and lay eggs in them. When the eggs hatch, the larvae feed on the dung. Tiger beetles are fierce predators, chasing down almost any prey they can find, including other insects. Their fast legs and strong jaws make their job easy. Tiger beetles are the fastest runners in the insect world. Even the larvae of tiger beetles are predators who eat other insects. The larvae hide in burrows, popping part way out and snatching passing insects with their jaws. The stag beetle, with horns or antlers of like a stag or a male deer, look rather fierce, but it's also one of the most harmless of all insects and only eats tree sap and other liquids. Its horns are actually its jaws. Male stag beetles use these jaws to wrestle with each other for females. Horn beetles, like this rhinoceros beetle, include some of the largest beetles in the world. Some of these beetles are also called Hercules beetles due to their great strength. The males use their horns to drive other males away from a female when it's time to mate. Many of them live in hot, wet, tropical areas. One of the largest and heaviest of all insects is the male Goliath beetle of Africa. Goliaths can grow to be more than 5 inches long and weigh about as much as 2 golf balls. Their heavy bodies make them poor flyers, but they're able to climb trees with ease, using their strong legs and good claws. Aren't we beetles amazing? All insects, from those with eardrums on their abdomens, to those that make their own honey, to those that glow in the dark, are truly amazing. Many insects are so small, you may forget that they're living all around you. In the trees, underground, even in your houses. It's true that some insects can become a real nuisance, but many insects, like me, are extremely helpful. Next time you'll learn how important insects are to your everyday lives.